Welcome everybody, I'm Cindy DeFilippo and I am Daniel Webster Council's Family Engagement Coordinator. And this is the first membership workshop of 2023. And we will be talking about how to utilize the Pinewood Derby as a recruiting and marketing tool. But it's not just for PACs, you could really use the examples here for any event that any of our units may host um, like our Klondike derbies and can't, and even just a camp out or any type of event that you have planned throughout the year. We'll delay here, there we go. So most of us here know what a Pinewood Derby is. Basically our Cub Scouts get a block of wood and they turn that block of wood into something that races down a track. And a lot of times they win awards, they win, um, you know, they win participation patches, um, all the fun that you can imagine. But the wonderful thing about it is that it's really a learning experience centered around teamwork, ingenu ingenuity, sportsmanship, and just the thrill of the race, and also a lifetime of memories that they can actually share with fellow race racers and other children, but also their families. It's a real family fun-filled event for our packs. So this is giving examples of how we can use the pack. Uh, I'm sorry, how we can use the Pinewood Derby um, to really help your pack attract new members. So each piece of the Pinewood Derby, think you know, car cutting, designing the cars first, car cutting, painting the car, and then having your you know weigh-in date and having your event. All those pieces are opportunities to market your unit through social media, yard signage, and other community partnerships that will draw more families in. So we're gonna talk about your audience, know them, know who they are, how to target them, uh, planning for measurement, because measurement is key to know if your campaign was a success. We're gonna learn a little bit about QR codes, your bscout.org pins, setting up your Facebook page, and identifying some Derby partners. And then really building the campaign as well, setting up calendar events on Facebook, boosting those events, really um, setting up a Facebook or social media campaign, and then really thinking about those hyper-local marketing techniques, flyers, yard signs, posters that we use for recruiting for year round. Um, and then really spreading the word and really counting on your scouting families to spread the word because Nothing gets scouts in there more than your own families and your own scouts, right? Those kids spread the word for us. <clears throat> so, you know, just like, as we say, a strong home starts with a, with a solid foundation. The same is true for marketing. I'm sure a lot of you have heard that in many aspects of life. So this whole kit provides step-by-step -step tips to promote and host a successful event. Um, and well, there'll also be ideas, like we said, to use a Pinewood Derby to really recruit new scouts into your unit, or again, any event that your unit may be hosting. So we want to really know our audience. And as most of you probably realize, the audience is uh, moms and dads or guardians, right? Grandparents, the folks that care for the children uh, in your community. So as we develop the campaign, it's critical that you keep these adults' needs in sharp focus to make sure that your message is heard by the right audience. So you're not necessarily targeting, you know, children. And if some kids, you know, who may happen to be on Facebook or may happen to see some videos or pictures of the Derby, they'll, they'll get excited about it. But most of uh, the folks that are on Facebook these days are parents. Um, folks, you know, around in their 40s that have young kids, 30s and 40s. So um, there's dozens of data sources where we can construct a persona, and we'll show you that. We'll show you an example of a profile of a person that we need to reach. And then um, you really want to get to know the parents and make sure that the marketing really speaks to them. So here's an example of um, a typical scouting parent, we would say, or scouting adult. Um, so, you know, in general, a lot of our research that we did to it at a council level, a lot of adults that cared for children really just wanted the kids to be safe, emotionally healthy, prepared for real life, which is our, our forte, 
and uh, really develop life skills and values. And they wanted to experience activities and all the fun stuff with the children in their lives. And then a lot of them do feel that technology is a blessing and a curse. And I think we all feel that sometimes. So a lot of these adults, they're a bit skeptical. They may question the marketing. Um, they'll search the web and social media for you know, information that um, really validates their decisions. And uh, re as you guys probably have noticed, a lot of our adults are spread really thin, right? They volunteer for a lot of things. They're both working full time, uh, really busy people. So we have to make everything super, super simplified for them to join and also want to help us too, because we're not recruiting just the kids, we're recruiting volunteers to help us in our units as well. And also um, they may feel a little insecure or overwhelmed, right? Because they don't have um, the physical tools or maybe some of the tools or knowledge about scouting where they feel like they can help. You know, they, they walk in, they might see all of us in uniform and think, well, you know, oh, these people are professionals. They have uniforms and I don't know how to do this. And I don't know how I fit in. So we got to take that all into account, make sure everyone feels welcome and, you know, safe, including the adults and making them feel like they can um, dive in and be hands on as well. So um, parents really look online for their information and they often spend five or more hours a day on average online and on social media. Um, and they read online reviews as well and um, really trust the communication that comes from their child's school. And we talk about the school relationships often and that is really key. Um, even though our flyers you know, are often state that it's not a school sponsored event, they really take those flyers um, and, and any communication that comes from the school to heart. Um, so this does address some of the questions that maybe some parents or, or new folks coming in have. And, um, and this is something that you can print out and kind of keep with you. So um, you have you know, the answers that maybe will soothe some of their concerns. So a plan for measurement, and this really kind of gets into a lot more detail. But this may help you with a lot of your events in general with how you are attracting families. Um, obviously, we all take attendance anyway. So you really wanna focus on the attendance, especially during these times that you have these big events like the Derby or Blue and Gold or um, a special you know, event that you may host at your tribe organization that's bringing more families in. You know, How many scouts picked up Pinewood Derby kit? How many you know, attended the, the building events or the design events that you planned and how many signed up to race. And then you can track your social media engagement. Um, there's Facebook analyt analytics that make it super easy to track likes and comments and shares and the visits to your event pages as well. So if you haven't created a social media page, a Facebook page for your unit, um, specifically for marketing and recruiting as well, um, definitely do that. And there are um, great step-by-step -step how to pages, um, even through Facebook that, that teach you how to do that. It's very simple. Um, and then flyers, yard signs and posters and make sure you include QR codes on those. Um, folks these days use QR codes all the time. They're very comfortable with it. And when you create the QR code, you can also track those click-through rates. So you can see um, what posters, what flyers, what yard signs are getting those clicks. And that's really important too, to keep track of. So that way in the future, you may not use a certain strategy because maybe you didn't get as many clicks or you may use that strategy again because it was really popular for you guys and really resulted in some new members. Um, a reminder while we're on that topic, we do have flyers. They're not Pine One Derby themed, but we do have flyers um, at the member care center and we can print flyers whenever you guys need them. We do have a million yard signs available for Scouts BSA venturing, exploring and um, Cub Scouts, the Cub Packs as well. And we do have some posters too. The posters are a little outdated. They have, um, I think mostly boys on them. They weren't updated co-ed yet, um, but we do have those materials. We also have brand new bookmarks that were printed and you can drop off piles of bookmarks at local businesses that maybe are scout friendly, your local libraries, your school libraries, et cetera. 
Um, and then some emails too, depending on what you use for email, you can track the click-through rates on your emails too. So you can see maybe what emails um, got more response than, than other communications. So speaking of QR codes, you can go to, um, I think it's called QR Code Monkey, one of those sites where there's lots of free, sounds funny, but it's true, I use that one a lot. Um, there's a lot of free um, sites where you can create QR codes and um, make sure they don't expire. Some of the sites, they expire after a certain amount of time. You don't want to expire in case people continuously um, may scan it and they can continue, continue, yeah, continue to track it. So, um, you know, QR codes, you could have that QR code go to your, your PAC or your unit's website um, for in a case where you're having a big event like this, like the Pinewood Derby, you would want that QR code to go to your uh, Facebook event, um, make sure it's public for the Pinewood Derby. So folks can see the event, see the details and respond to it. So that way, when it gets closer to the event, they will be reminded of it as well. Because remember, these folks are super busy, so they're gonna need constant reminders on you know, when, where they need to go and where they need to be. Um, they can be used on flyers, posters, yard signs. You can print out a QR code almost the size as, a, as an eight and a half by 11 paper, and then maybe cut that out, laminate it, or put it in one of those plastic sheets, um, or even with some clear duct tape on those yard signs. And um, it would be super easy at a stoplight for someone to scan it quick and look at that website later on when it's safe to do so. Um, and uh, there are some helpful links on um, this page as well. Like I said, this will be on the Membership and Marketing Hub for you guys to download later too. So we have all these tools here for you. And as we always say, update your beascout.org pins, especially before big events like this. And now that most of us have rechartered, make sure you go in there and that all the contact information is up to date. Maybe you had a leadership change. Maybe you changed a meeting time or a meeting date, or maybe you changed chart organizations. But even if the changes weren't that big, go in there, double check, make sure everything's up to date. And I um, suggest in the additional information, there's a paragraph where you can write in something about your unit, write something that, you know, um, maybe unique to your unit or write in what your scouts love to do. You know, we can't wait for the Pinewood Derby and we have a camp out um, twice a year or whatever the situation may be. And then, um, and then write in there the days and times that you meet. Our pack meets Mondays at 6.30 p.m. Because the person that is looking through there that's ready to join will join if they know that your unit fits into their schedule. We've had some uh, families recently that have joined units and I'll have unit leaders call and say, I have this new scout, but I don't know where they came from. They're just, they're just new, what do I do? And I said, accept them, tell them about your next meeting. And I think we're not used to that because usually they come in with a friend or another, you know, with another family that is already part of the unit. But more and more folks are gonna be signing up when they know that your unit fits into their schedule. And then they'll come and visit you. And if, if it ends up not being a great fit for them, um, those families can always transfer into another unit. It's very easy to do that. So you wanna always send those interested families to beascout.org and you can download your own personal um, unit's pin uh, by going into the invitation manager um, and scrolling down, you can download that pin and print that out. Um, or put it on a flyer um, at your event. So folks can scan that, they can put themselves into the invitation manager, or they can apply online right through that pin as well by going into your application manager. And like we talked about a few seconds ago, set up a Facebook page if you haven't done so already. And if you do have one, make sure it's up to date, make sure you're posting on there often. Um, you know, post pictures of your scouts doing cool things. And if you choose not to use your scouts, there are tons of pictures and videos on the BSA Brand Center. Plus on the Daniel Webster Council Facebook page, that's a public page and we share lots and lots of scout facts and tidbits and pictures 
um, and videos that you can also share to your pages as well. So you already have some uh, media to pull from, which is great. Um, so this does show you how to set up a Facebook page. And um, again, you can scan these now if you have your phone with you, but they'll also be available to you as well. But if you go to Facebook and, um, or if you even search online, how do I set up a Facebook page? Those things will come up for you as well. And it's really easy step-by-step -step directions too. Um, so this talks about partnerships, which I won't go into too much detail, but a, a derby or a blue and gold event are great events to really create relationships with businesses in your communities. You know, maybe they help you out with certain accessories or materials or, or you know, decorations for the event or whatever it may be. Um, they may just be a great scouting supporter and you can ask if you can put posters in the windows of their business or maybe you can put flyers inside the pizza boxes taped inside or taped on the outside for, um, for folks picking up pizzas at your local pizza shop. Um, you know, maybe you can put bookmarks on the, on the countertops. So really think about those local businesses that are near where you meet, where families go, where you can maybe stop in, introduce yourself and, um, and really create that relationship for them to also support scouting. And then maybe they give you some coupons and you can encourage your families to visit their business as well. So that way it's a reciprocal relationship. Those are some ideas there. Um, so here are some um, five key elements for a promotional plan. So you wanna make the most of social media and you wanna create a series of Facebook calendar events. So you wanna set up an event for car cutting, let's say, or let's start with the car design because that's really fun for the kids too. They love coming up with that design. And then the car cutting event. And then maybe you have a separate weigh-in event and then the impound night. Um, and you can make these all really fun for your families too. And then of course, the best of all, the Pinewood Derby event, which is one of my favorites. I think I say that in almost every workshop. And then you can actually boost um, the Facebook calendar events. You can also boost pictures as well. Um, and you can set a budget. It, it does cost money. It's like running an advertisement. Um, we'll get more into that in a little bit. And then um, the suggestion is to set up a two week social media campaign. And then you wanna do the hyper-local marketing of flyers, yard signs and posters with those QR codes, and then ask your families to also spread the word. So this goes into more detail about setting up the calendar event. Um, so just think about you know, every event and everything that you may do with your unit need some sort of landing page. People are always looking for more information. So whether it's on your scouting website or a Facebook page or an event page, make that your landing page and make sure people have access to it. Um, the calendar invitation is a great tool to use not only for the Derby and Blue and Gold and other big events, campouts, Klondikes, all that fun stuff, but it's also really great for your joint scouting nights, which as you know, we're really focusing on dynamic recruiting, which means we are welcoming people all the time. So maybe once a month you have um, a bring a friend event, make sure you schedule those on your Facebook pages and have, you know, you know, all are welcome, bring a friend night and have a little incentive for your scouts to invite a friend or two. And, you know, maybe the, maybe the den or patrol that invites the most scouts wins a pizza party or a popsicle party or something like that. And remind them about the recruiter patch as well. Um, and then you can increase the impact of your calendar events. So make sure you add a great image. And again, there's lots of great images on the BSA Brand Center if you need them. Um, write a compelling description. So you wanna tell people why they should attend and any information about the scouting you know, unit or event there. And then include um, a registration link. So whether it's they're just RSVPing on the calendar event, or if you have a registration link through your website, or maybe you create a Cognito form of some sort or a Google form that registers them. So that way you can gather all their contact information and maybe you add them to um, an email list that you have. Maybe it's an email list of, you know, once every couple of weeks they get updates about your unit and you send invites for them to come to uh, your next meeting. 
There's also a sample copy available, and this is on the BSA Brand Center as well. Um, it just, you know, shows you what you can do. You always want to have a call to action of some sort. The call to action here is at the bottom, message us or call for more information. Um, you could also put a link to your website or a link to the actual event there as well. And then um, this talks all about boosting your Facebook event. Um, this really allows you to target your, you know, prime audience. Uh, you know, want to capture these families, whether it's around schools, um, playgrounds, maybe a bowling alley nearby where families go. And um, if you log into Facebook and you click boost event on your own event, or if you click uh, boost image or boost your post, it actually walks you through um, boosting it. And it's, it's a, um, they do it really well because it's really kind of self-explanatory. Um, you, you can go in and you can select your audience and our target is men and women age 25 to 49. Those are for the most part our parents. And then you can, when, it, when you um, look to boost the event, you can put in interest targets. So of course, parents of elementary kids or parents of middle school kids, um, you can put all those in, but you don't want to get too limited in who you're targeting because you may leave out some folks that you don't mean to leave out. And then it also suggests where you should consider fencing around. So fencing is like an invisible fence it's basically talking about an area of the group that you want to target and, and where those folks usually are. So, you know, schools, family restaurants, parks, playgrounds, rec centers, um, all, you know, all the places that our families go. And then it talks about launching your cam campaign here as well. Um, on the BSA Brand Center, they actually have a four week schedule of posts and you just basically can copy and paste um, into where you create your post and then just add your own units information. And it makes it super easy. Here's a sample right here. You can download this whole thing and um, even gives you a site link to refer to, suggested images, which are all in the brand center, hashtags and uh, post language as well. So it's a, great, um, it's a great resource. And if you had maybe a half hour or so, however long it takes you to navigate Facebook, um, you can sit with a cup of coffee and you can schedule these all out ahead of time. And that's what I love about Facebook too, is that whenever you have those free tidbits of time, which I know a lot of us don't have a ton of free time, but this is really quick and easy. And once you have them scheduled out, you don't have to worry about it again, which is really great. And hashtags make everything searchable. So if someone were to type in adventure or scouts or Pinewood Derby, or even if you did hashtag race car and someone typed in racing or race car, your post would pop up um, in that person's search. So that's the importance of having those hashtags. Again, going hyper-local with the flyers. Unfortunately, we don't have these derby flyers, but my goal is to get them for next year because I do think they're super fun and, um, and I would love to have them to offer to you guys. But we can certainly make do with the ones that we have. Um, and we can, you can download these derby flyers that you see on the screen from the BSA Brand Center. You could print out a handful to bring to uh, those local scouting friendly businesses, or maybe, um, you know, have at your tribe organization as well, if there's a lot of families there too. So you may want to ask those local businesses like we talked about to distribute flyers, or maybe just have them on the counter. Yard signs, you know, everywhere that folks are driving and, and, you know, maybe near some stoplights, near some schools, and, um, and make sure every design includes that all important QR code. And don't forget to really ask the families in your unit to invite their friends and families to visit meetings, not just the big events. And, you know, encourage those families to join in with, join in on the fun with their family. And um, as you're posting, the Derby posts or other events or any posts that you post on social media, remind your parents or your families often to also share those posts to their own uh, social media pages as well. They'll get distributed a lot further that way. Ask parents, you know, to go ahead and distribute some of those flyers or bookmarks or yard signs around town. And even don't forget their own front yard. Um, I have a yard sign out in my yard as well. And uh, I sometimes ask my neighbors if they mind if we put a few in their yard too. And, um, 
you know, if you're part of a PTO or a PTA or know folks in a, in a parent teacher or school group, make sure that they know about it. And sometimes they're more than willing to put um, little events and little blurbs in um, their newsletters or in or electronically if they send the newsletter electronically as well. Um, after school care centers is a great spot to drop off flyers and bookmarks and maybe a little bit of swag if you have some. Um, and uh, don't forget those community cork boards um, at grocery stores and hardware shops and around town. So uh, timelines and schedules are important. I know it's always hard to think so far ahead, but you do want to schedule out your um, social media calendar, you know, quite a few weeks ahead. So if you are, um, you know, let's say December 1st, which this is obviously, I, I feel like a lot of, some of us, I've, I've seen some packs that they have, they've had their derbies already in January, but I know a lot of us may have it in March after crossover. But let's say you, st you announced the Pinewood Derby in December 1st, December 10th, you distribute the cars. So you see how the schedule is. And then January 15th to February 5th, you have the races. So you wanna backdate promoting those events. And there is a membership backdater on the Membership and Marketing Hub, the Daniel Webster Council Membership and Marketing Hub um, under uh, resources and downloads. So again, this is all talking about, you can go to the BSA Brand Center and then the Manchester Scout Shop has everything you need for the Pinewood Derby. And that is basically the gist of promoting an event and recruiting um, more families into your unit at the same time. Now, the other thing is, is how do you involve your partnering troop or if you have another partnering pack? Um, and I'd love to hear if you guys had, had ideas on that as well. But um, I know for a lot of folks, they include the troop, let's say at the Derby, we'll continue to use that as an example. Um, and at the Derby, um, some of the older kids come and they take the cars that have raced and they bring them back up to the garage, we call it the garage. And then the leader, you know, prepares them to race again because you have multiple heats, right? Um, they may go around and help some of the Cub Scouts fix their cars if they get damaged in an intense race. Um, they may cheer Cub Scouts on. I always love it. I love seeing the kids cheer on other kids. So maybe they're helping other kids make posters or, um, or signs that cheer on their friends because we want to show good sportsmanship. So that's one way you can include the troop. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of times we, save interacting with our partnering troop kind of when cross, crossover is about to happen, right? Because you have some families that are crossing over very soon in February. But remember, having that relationship throughout the year creates a, spawn, a stronger bond with your families. You know, you want those families feeling comfortable. Here, they've gotten used to being in a pack that might have been there for many years. And they're crossing over to a whole new world, because as we all know, going from pack to troop is really different, right? It's like you walk in, I know I walked in and we were in the pack since my son was a tiger and I crossed out and I knew, I felt like I knew everything that I could know about scouting at that point, right? And then I crossed over to the troop and I'm standing there going, what am I supposed to be doing? <laughs> right, what am I supposed to be doing? I'm, I'm standing here, the kids are doing their own thing, right? It's a whole new world. So it's nice for the troop to invite pack families along just as much as it is for the pack families to invite the troop families. So have those occasional, you know, maybe every, you know, I'd like to say even once a month, but that can be a lot sometimes, but maybe every couple of months, you know, you get together and you have an event together where maybe, you know, it's a great time for those um, troop members to use the um, edge method, right? And they're teaching the cubs how to do something, whether it's not tying or putting up a tent or some um, first aid skills, the list goes on. So just keep that in mind as you're playing these events, how to include the partnering troop because you know the troop needs the kids from our packs and the packs, you know, you want to have the packs want to stay and join the troops. Then you want the families to feel involved so they will help you out and hopefully volunteer. I'd love to hear what some of you guys do or if you have some questions. I know we went through a lot of that. That was a lot of information and I'm sorry if I sped through it. Um, 
I get excited, so I talk quick. I talk quickly. <laughs> Afraid. Well, we uh, our our Pinewood Derby this year. Um, we're having the troop come down and um, cook burgers um, for everybody. We have a decent uh, grill set up because in Deerfield we do the uh, Deerfield Deerfield Fair. Um, so we have uh, the troop has all of like um, the grills for cooking breakfast sandwiches and burgers for the fair. So they're going to bring that to. Um, our event and they're going to use that as a fundraiser for Philmont, which we're going to in August. Um, but they're also um, going to do like a bring a friend uh, thing and they're going to bring some of their old cars from when they were uh, Cubs and they're going to do like an alumni race. Uh, so I just love that. We're, we're working really hard on trying to make uh, a more seamless continuity before between Cubs and, and, and the troop. Um, so <clears throat> We have uh, a few events, um, including Cubs, uh, including Pinewood Derby, but also um, we have a, a Valentine's Day um, archery thing. You know, it was Cupid in the in the bow. So we're gonna have, we're gonna have uh, the uh, the trailer with the archery thing um, target thing come down in February, and uh, the troop is gonna help recruit for. Um, the Cubs, and it's going to another bring a friend of that. I love that play on Cupid. That's so great. <laughs> I love that. I love Valentine's Day. So um, that I was, I, that's so great. I love that. And what you said there, Jude, too, and I appreciate that is, you know, the troop helping the pack recruit. I think that's so important. That's such a huge, important piece of the puzzle um, you know, you have experienced leaders in the troop, you know, most of the time. And um, those scouts who, oh, you have a flyer here. Perfect. And the scouts that, um, you know, that that are older and the kids love seeing the older scouts, you know, they, they think they're super cool, all right, in their uniforms. And it's like they're, it's a nice in between, you know, seeing those older scouts because, you know, they don't, they may not think we're so cool, but they like the older kids and they respect them. <laughs> So um, I love that idea and, I, and it is so important. I know um, we're also planning a few events where we're going to help out our partnering pack as well uh, with recruiting, you know, some kids and it is, it's just important to have that relationship to say, Hey, you know, can you guys come support us for a little bit or, you know, come and hang out with us. And, and um, it makes those families that are crossing over a lot more comfortable too, for sure. So what I posted is I posted a flyer that I developed. Um, it's, re it's really just pictures of uh, my kids because I didn't have sign offs from any other families, uh, you know, mm -hmm. naturally. Um, but uh, the idea is that there's a, a QR code on it. But what I like about what you're saying is that I could take this flyer and it could be a model and I could change the verbiage in it. Mm -hmm. And um, I could add QR codes to it. Like you're saying, I think what I could do is add a QR code um, to both event specific um, calendar and also have it just be to our general like sign up. Like right now I have it just to our general sign up page, mm -hmm. uh, but also setting up a calendar where we have like a running events. Um, now this is set up as a trifold and we have a little uh, stands that we could put them in local businesses. So anyone looking at could pick it up QR and then go straight to a calendar and see what's going on. So I really like that, that use of the QR on that. I think we're going to utilize that. Um, yeah, that's, that's awesome. I think having a QR code, I'm trying to open it now. I'm trying to see if I can share it so you guys can see. Um, yeah, that's excellent. Um, it has some good information too. I'm trying to figure out a way to, to share it with you guys. Um, let's see. But um, I don't want to take up too much time, but I'll figure that out. You know what? I can email. If you don't mind, um, Jude, I'll email it to this group because I know they'll yeah. no, it. it's fine. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, that's the great part of QR codes because you can have it go to anything you want. And, you know, it's really important to have it linked to your bscout.org QR. Uh, you know, well, you can have a QR code for, for the bscout.org, but um, you can also 
save that link. So if for some reason you can't download that QR code, you can save the link to your unit's pin by just basically searching for your own pin. And then there's three dots and I'll say like, save this unit's pin. And then um, it'll be a link and then you can create the QR code from there as well. Um, and so then that way people can either request more information and then they'll be in your invitation manager or they'll say, oh, I wanna apply now and they'll be in your application manager. Um, and that's really important to have everywhere. Um, when we know we're having new families come in, I um, have a framed QR code, a big QR code, um, right at our little membership table. And you know, I ask families to scan it. And if they're not ready to join, to just put their names in the invitation manager because it's a really, you know, it's a good way to track it. You know, sometimes we have the piece of paper, which we do have um, a joint scouting night um, content information like tracker sheet on um, the Dating Webster Council membership and marketing hub under resources and downloads. You can download it and print it out if you're more of a paper person, but you know what happens. Maybe one person takes that paper, maybe they lose it, or maybe they're the only ones with the information. Uh, maybe they don't get back to you know everybody in a certain amount of time who, you know, they're busy. You never know what will happen with that. But if you have people go directly into your invitation manager, then it's there for the key three to see. You can interact with them, you can email them through there. Um, and you can send them an application through there um, for them to apply online as well. So that's why we really encourage folks to um, use those online tools because I think it helps everybody when everybody's so busy with trying to manage everything else in life, right? Um, and, then, and then also, like you said, Jude, that QR code to a Facebook event um, or your unit's website. Um, however, you're gonna track those people coming in or you know, um, is key to what you want to put there. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. I love that. Anyone else have something coming up? I see Lynn's unmuted, but. Yeah, I, I, well, we're, we're going to be doing our Pinewood Derby in February. So the kids all got, got their cars at the December pack meeting. Nice. So, yeah. And then our, our, um may event is we're going to battleship cove oh um, awesome i love battleship cove yeah and we invited pac 12 to come with us too so oh excellent so, so that'll be kind of fun i think that's what we forget too right lynn and i know you, you guys mm. do this i think every once in a while inviting like a partnering pack because you know if some of our packs are getting a little on the smaller side it really is a smart idea for everybody to to partner up with another pack because the kids have more fun with more kids, right? Yeah. And then you also have more adults that can help out. So maybe you do more bigger events together because you have more, you know, there's strength in numbers, as they say. Right. And sometimes, you know, some places have minimums too. That's so true. Um, Battleship Co. really doesn't, but some places do. So I so the, so our pack is really looking forward to doing the battleship code with them, and in the end, you know, the middle school and the high school are collaborative between the two towns, so they're all going to be friends mm -hmm. at some point anyway. You know, right? Whether so they that's like kind, it or not, kind of yeah. fun too. Yeah, whether they like it or not. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. great. I love that. We did battleship cove, and um, it was one of my son's favorite things, and yeah, they slept fun. overnight, and really fun. It was fun. Yeah. I do have a question though about yeah. Allison's um, uh, base camp newsletters. I'm not getting them anymore. Is she just not doing them because she's busy with other things? Um, she might have stopped them for a while. I know right now we're coming up with like a new uh, communications plan okay. across the board because we're finding that maybe, um, you know, we were attempting to communicate as much as possible, but maybe it was too much at times. Um, so we are coming up with a communications plan that really, um, is like the biggest bang for everyone's buck. So that way people don't feel like they're overwhelmed with emails. Okay. Um, so we're changing that up a little bit. We're in the process. There's a lot of, a lot of moving parts right now. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I, I just haven't, I haven't gotten any in months. Um, and it's a little, the whole base camp, um, thing is harder to navigate, I find, mm -hmm. to find out when the next merit badge workshops or things like that are happening. So, yeah, um, that website is a little tricky, I feel like. Um, yeah. But um, 
if you guys have you know certain questions that we always recommend to do the support at nhscaling.org that goes into a ticketing system so mm -hmm. our team makes sure it goes to, <clears throat> to the right person um i know something that we just um there was a link that just went out to request um camp um blue and gold placement so it has all the camp information yeah um, it has some fun stuff for the kids to do at blue and gold and um that will be um that link will be available on the outdoor programs page okay um on nhscouting.org um so yeah i can just request the number that you'd like and they'll be at the member care center okay I was going to say something else about partnering up with the with the uh, multiple packs too. It'll come back to me. What else? What else do you guys have going on, Jeanette? It looks like you're you're thinking. <laughs> I, can I know read I've yeah. I've been out of been homebound, so like uh, it's been a rough December and January. So um, trying to get back into the units. We're at where I, I don't know anybody on the, the call except for Donna because we do commissioner meetings. <laughs> um, so, but, you know, that's it, you know, um, but trying to get back in, like you said, uh, COVID finally hit me while being How are you feeling? It was like a really, really bad cold. Really? And I was like, okay, my daughter tested and she's like, comes upstairs, she's like, you need to test mom. And yep. So all my family um, caught it um, last week and we're still recovering. Um, so now just get over that, you know, um, but yeah, luckily like, like this new virus is just, it's it's a, a really bad cold and mm -hmm. it didn't hit us as hard as the earlier ones did, but trust trying to get back. And of course the weather, hello, you know, no. like, <laughs> planning to go to units and I'm like, oh, can't get it canceled because of snow <laughs> um, but i know for abenaki we have klondike coming up the fourth um i'm going to be there to help because i'm like you know what i have some time now oh nice help so um i'm going to be there and help at one of the events um i have email going out with um from my units that are you know this is what they're doing on facebook and such but Lynn, I know on on um, Facebook today, I think on the Daniel Webster Council, they put the information about uh, Granite Base Camp. So okay, oh, I think that went out there too. I don't, yeah. you know, I I haven't had internet because of the storm, and I just right. got it back. <laughs> I just got it back about an hour ago. So, oh, oh my goodness, <laughs> just in time. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the wires got taken off my house. So I was oh. the last of the Mohegans to be, be oh, yeah. um, put on the power grid yesterday. And, yeah. and now, you know, everything else has to get reattached. So um, yeah. I'll, I'll take a look. Thanks for letting me know that. You're welcome. But I know that on, um, as a district commissioner, um, you, they also have Yeah, well, um, we don't have one. We don't have a district commissioner. We don't have any commissioners for our units. We oh. haven't. In, we haven't probably in about four or five years. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. Because all of us get um, it's the Slack communication that comes out of council, so we can get all oh. that information and share it with our units. Yeah. So we don't have one. So no. um, Hollis doesn't either. Hollis doesn't. Yeah, Hollis and Bro I'm in Brookline. You're in Brookline. Yeah. So. Oh. We'll have oh, well. to make sure we get some information out to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So usually I, I just search around and find stuff. I'm pretty good at doing that, but <laughs> but sometimes, you know, it's just one more thing to do, as you know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's easier when the information comes to you. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I get an email, I'm gonna read it, you know. But yeah. sometimes I don't have the time to to really dig around all the time. So that's why I'm, I'm kind of missing Allison's uh, weekly emails because then I felt like I was really connected. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, I'll double check because um, I'm not sure. I was subscribed to them at some point too. So I'll double check yeah. and see if we're missing anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but Sounds I think good. we'll be getting some communication out soon for sure. Okay, great. 
Anyone else have anything to add? Any, any uh, different? Thank you, Jeanette um, and Jude for chiming in um, and Lynn. Um, <laughs> anyone else want to chime in on how they're partnering up with other PACs or troops or other units and how it's been working and any tips for anyone else here? Don't be shy. <laughs> I can, I can tell you that um, in two, two of my PACs that I'm a commissioner for, um, for the past year and a half, they worked together. All their meetings were together. Um, they had both Cub Masters running their own, you know, taking care of their own PAC information, but they had events and it worked out really well. They grew both units. In fact, for this year, they had to separate. Wow, that's that great. They could, they could go back. You know, the one, the one unit that was out of their town could go back to their own town, and they ended up growing more by being wow. there. But it, it, it was a, it was a great success to get both units going, and the troops are trying to do that same thing because um, one of them's at ten, and one's one of them is at five. Mm -hmm. And they figure that if they can get together, they can get some events going, um, get some merit badges going too. So I know that's working on their advantage too. I'm so glad you brought that up because I think for a long time, there were a lot of folks that felt like it's kind of a competition, right? And we're okay with friendly competition. That's always, it inspires us a little bit. It motivates us. But I think it's important that, you know, we're all in for the same thing. We want to provide this great program for all youth. Um, you know, for us, it's here in New Hampshire, but where, wherever, really. And I think it's important that, you know, that we do team up because the other option is that, you know, we have packs that are folding or we have troops that are folding. And, you know, um, you brought up a good point. You know, there's some units that may have 10 or five kids. And it's really hard to function even with 10 kids, I feel like, because think about the parent pool, the adult pool. You know, it gets really small at that point. And especially in a cup pack, there's a lot of events and a lot of activities that, that go on um, where you really uh, rely on a lot of adults. Um, so really teaming up with another um, unit that's somewhat nearby, um, even for the weekly events, like you were saying, Jeanette, I think that's a great idea. You know, it's, um, it's a way to really help each other out and to keep these kids in scouting because that pack with five kids, I mean, they, they weren't going to hang on for, you know, those kids weren't going to hang on probably for long without, um, you know, having some more friends, you know, it really, mm -hmm. it really is strength in numbers. It seems like, you know, as things start to, when kids start to dwindle off, it really starts to break down because then you run out of adults too. Yep. You know, some of our dens meet, meet on the same, in the same spot too. Um, not because they're small, it's because the parents have requested it. Mm -hmm. You know, if they have a uh, a lion and they, uh, it's it's mostly our tigers and wolves right now. You know, you have kids in, at both ages and they just don't want to go out an additional night for a den, den meeting because all our den meetings, all den leaders have picked different different nights based on what their families can do and what they can do themselves. So um, that's worked out pretty well. Yeah, it's a good point. I think, um, you know, we, we're trying to get more family friendly with, you know, now that we welcome, you know, girl, girls mm -hmm. into Cub Scouting as well. And, and, you know, a lot of our partnering troops, you know, the G troops and the B troops choose to meet at the same time too, because a lot of times the son is involved and the daughter's involved. Yep. Um, so when you have, you know, the whole family involved, it does make it a little bit easier, um, you know, to have them on the same nights. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that works, you know, for your unit, if it works for your leaders, um, it's definitely um, more beneficial, I think, because yeah. again, families are really busy. So the easier, the easier that we make things. Yeah, um, and for and too, in my town, meeting space is limited, so yeah. so that helps with scheduling too, because there just is not enough space. In, across town on some nights. Yeah. That, that definitely makes sense. I know we, we oh, all our dens always met, met the same night. It just made it mm. a little bit easier, but we were lucky we had the space to do it, so. Right. 
Well, it's just about eight o'clock and I, um, unless folks have more questions, um, I don't want to, you know, I mean, I love chatting with you guys, but <laughs> um, I know um, there's other things to do, like more scouting. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, I have to go on the Daniel Webster page to see the yeah. stuff, so, so that's what I'll be doing. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, th th this was my PAC meeting night, so that's why I was in late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, thank you for joining us, Terrence. That was nice. Thank you. I know it's always hard to pick a good night for everybody because I know we all have our own meetings and our and plenty of other obligations, I'm sure. So I'm glad you could join us. Yep. And we, we had a great night. The den leaders were prepared and the kids were awesome. So it's been a good That's day. Great. That's great. I love that, right? That's the best part, I think, is like when you see the kids and everybody's having fun. And, you know, there's a smile on everyone's face, including the adults. I always look at the adults, too. And, you know, and that's the key. You know, I get a lot of questions about, well, how do we recruit more volunteers? How do we get more adults in? And that is that is tough, especially right now, coming out of COVID when people kind of had a break, right? But I always ask people, the first thing I ask is, are you having fun? And they kind of don't know what to say, right? But if we're all having fun and we're smiling and these people are our friends, like I know... In our troop, um, all the adults in our troop, they're like all my best friends. Like we've all kind of, our kids have grown up together at this point. And so when folks see that you're having fun, they're gonna want to naturally join in and help out, even if it's just a little bit at a time. And I think we all are like, hey, do you wanna be the events coordinator, right? Hey, do you wanna be the cub master? That's really <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you want to, you know, do you want to be the popcorn colonel? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I know, that was my first task as an adult was popcorn colonel. <laughs> uh, I'm so just much work to do it. <laughs> That's how I first got in, involved at a district level too, because I ended up being a district mentor for, uh, for popcorn. And <laughs> that's, where, that's where it all began. <laughs> oh my gosh. But um, yeah. I know. Oh, I should mention... I, Cindy, uh, just a, a game that we played um, at oh, our yeah. December pack meeting um, that the kids really loved. We had a candy cane relay race. Oh, fun. You know, and then they all had candy canes and, and Christmas cookies, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, afterwards. my God. What's better than that? Yeah, we sugared up every, everybody up and sent them <laughs> home. Them home. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we like to do. <laughs> we like to yep. them all up. <laughs> but it was, it, I, I'd never heard of it, but one of our den leaders had had uh done it at one point in her previous pack and and it and it it was a lot of fun oh that sounds like so much fun i know i love that i think that's another thing too and we're and we could talk about all this stuff forever but you know not every meeting has to be you know learning or doing something specific or working on advancement right you can throw in a little bit of fun like especially when you're doing um you know bring a friend nights or bring a buddy nights you know um, do the fun stuff, have them do, you know, a gaga ball game or a relay race, like Lynn said, or there's a lot of simple things you can do without spending really any money, which is nice too. And, um, and, you know, they all got candy canes, which is a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them were broken because they got dropped in the, in the race, but didn't seem to matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They all, they still taste the same. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and my daughter just opened up a candy cane the other day and she goes, Oh, this one isn't broken. I think every single, one, <laughs> every single one's been broken to some degree. Like, oh, she loves them. She's like, she's 12. But ever since she was little, she's been like, well, you know, more little, a little more. She's been um, like addicted to candy canes. So that's like her thing. She loves them. <laughs> I love that. Oh, someone just came in just now. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I I, um, I love that. I love the relay races. And that's like another thing that we can involve our partnering units or even the partnering troops. I think a, a lot of times we think the older kids, you know, are done with like the fun stuff, but they still, they won't admit it, but they they like it just as much as the younger kids do, especially the, especially the derby. Um, I know my son brought his older cars too, to um, almost every, you know, we've always gone back to the pack because we help out for the Derby and he always brings his old cars and races them. And um, he still has all his old cars like on his desk <laughs> and he just turned 15. So I don't think it ever gets old, you know. 
Hi, Lewis. Thanks for joining us. We we're just about to wrap up. I don't know if um, anyone had any other questions or if there's anything that I can help you with, but um, definitely support at nhscaling.org or if you have a specific membership question, you can do membership at nhscaling.org and that gets to um, me. I, I'll, I'll get alerted about it. Um, but I am here to help you recruit and retain your scouts and give you the tools to do that. And if you don't see something on the Daniel Webster Council Membership and Marketing Hub, or if you think there's something we're missing when it comes to materials as well, please, please let me know. Um, we are ramping up for spring recruiting, um, even though recruiting is year round, but um, definitely want a nice big push for the spring. And um, you can request flyers at any time. Um, get school approval, you know, first, I can send you a digital flyer for school approval and um, we can print out as many as you'd like. And we have the bookmarks, yard signs. And um, I can also, you know, if you're having like a, a recruiting event, um, we have lots of stickers that I just ordered as well. And um, I can give you a little bit of swag too for giveaways and stuff like that. Um, we have two mobile base camps now that go out quite often. The mobile base camps are loaded with membership items, swag, um, iPads to also uh, for folks to go in and put their information in, as well as um, the physical fun tools like soccer darts, backyard bass, which is waterless fishing, um, the archery ranges, BB gun ranges, spike ball and gaga ball. Um, so that's really a scouting on the go unit and it's like its own little carnival. So if there's a big community event that your unit is volunteering at or that you want to go to, request the mobile base camp. You can do that on the hub as well. Um, and we'll be in contact and kind of coach you through how to utilize that. Um, you can also reserve the individual pieces on its own if they're available. So if you just need the soccer darts for a fun event that maybe you're having at your chartered org, or if you want the gaga ball pit, we can kind of do bits and pieces depending on availability as well. And you'll also get a membership bin along with that. And in that membership bin, it will have a tracking sheet. It'll have stickers, bookmarks, flyers, um, some Camp Carpenter cups to give away, things like that. So anytime you take out an item, um, you'll get a bunch, you'll get a membership bin with a lot of recruiting elements in it as well. All righty. Well, thank you all so much. This was really fun. I enjoyed hearing the ideas, love seeing some of the new faces here and uh, the recording will be up soon. And um, yeah, like I said, any questions, please reach out anytime. We're here to help and excited to um, see what everyone does for the Derby. Have a great evening. Thanks, Cindy. Thank you. Thanks, Cindy. See you soon.